Hi, it's Kathleen and Mike, and we're here today at the Davis Lake Overlook in the Shiawassee Basin Preserve. We're here in search of some really specialized birds. These birds hunt in or near the water. Places like the Davis Lake Overlook are great habitat for these birds. In fact, in Oakland County, we are blessed with many extraordinary and biologically rich natural areas. Oakland County has over 89,000 acres of parklands, hundreds of inland lakes, and is the headwaters of five major watersheds. So today we're going to get outside and look for these very special birds. Ready, set, let's go birding. The birds we are looking for are known as wading birds. They are found along the edges of ponds, lakes, streams, marshes, and other wetlands. They are some of the biggest birds you can see in the area. Some can be as tall as a fifth grader. These birds are uniquely adapted to watery habitats where they find food and at times raise their young. Have you ever wondered what special super features these birds have to help them hunt at the water's edge? You can create an I wonder board for your questions. Let's find some answers. First, we need to understand the word adaptation. Biologists call special physical features and behaviors that help animals survive adaptations. A behavioral adaptation is a way an animal acts or behaves. Think about it. Animals that move in groups or herds, this would be a behavioral adaptation. More eyes, ears, noses to alert members of the group to dangers. This behavior helps the group survive. Physical adaptations are anatomical features that provide advantages to animals in certain environments. For instance, webbed feet help ducks move in the water. What adaptations do you think wading birds have? The great blue heron is a large wading bird seen along lakes and streams. Great blue herons have long necks that can fold and extend. Have you ever watched a great blue heron hunt? The long neck of the great blue heron extends its reach, allowing the bird to grab a meal beyond where it's standing, a physical adaptation. Herons stand motionlessly and then strike prey quickly, a behavioral adaptation. Wading birds use both physical and behavioral adaptations for hunting. What other features can you see great blue heron shoes while hunting? Another obvious physical feature is its long dagger-like bill. Scientists can tell what animals eat by looking at their teeth. For birds, scientists look at the shape of bills. Think about bills as tools in a toolbox. A heron's bill is like a knife that stabs and tongs that grab. Herons eat frogs, fish, reptiles, and small mammals using their bills. As herons stalk prey at the water's edge, their long legs allow them to step into shallow water without getting their feathers wet. Herons also have long toes for walking 
on many different substrates like rocks, sand, and mud. These toes help stabilize the birds as they walk. The great blue herons are the largest and heaviest herons in North America. Many people call them blue herons because they are predominantly blue-gray in color. They also have white and black heads, yellow-orange bills, and a black plume crest on their heads. Great blue herons can weigh up to six pounds, stand over four feet tall, and have a wingspan of nearly seven feet. Great blue herons have different color forms. In coastal Florida, there is a pure white heron, a subspecies of the great blue heron known as the great white heron. They are not found in Michigan, but there is a white heron in Michigan. It is smaller than the great blue heron with a thinner bill, darker legs, and does not have the black head plume, like the great blue heron. This bird is the great egret. Great egrets stand three feet tall, weigh about three pounds, and have a wingspan just under five feet. The great egret and the great blue herons have similar physical adaptations, long legs, long toes, dagger-like bills and long necks. They eat the same type of prey and show similar hunting behaviors. Both birds nest in colonies with other herons high in trees. These colonies are called rookeries. Egrets have a special history in bird conservation. Egrets develop long feathery plumes during their breeding season. These feathers are called agrites, which is the French word for egret, and are displayed in courtship. These beautiful feathers were prized and became fashion adornments on hats in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Market hunters collected feathers from egret colonies. This harvesting almost led to the extinction of these birds. A harvest could wipe out an entire colony of regrets, killing all of the breeding birds. Public reaction to this harvesting reached a tipping point at the beginning of the 20th century when a conservation officer was killed while guarding a rookery in Florida. This act of violence sparked the beginning of the conservation movement to protect birds. The National Audubon Society was formed to celebrate and protect birds. The great egret became the symbol of the National Audubon Society an icon that was rooted in tragedy, but symbolic of hope for a future where birds are protected. The National Audubon Society is the oldest conservation organization in the world. Another big bird in our area that is often thought of as a wading bird is the sandhill crane. Sandhill cranes belong to a different family of birds and are not related to herons. However, cranes are often confused with herons. Herons and cranes have some similarities. They both depend on wetlands for habitat and foraging. They both have long legs, long toes, long necks, and dagger-shaped bills. Here are a few ways to separate sandhill cranes from herons. In flight, cranes extend their necks, but herons coil their necks back in an S shape. Cranes walk slowly, 
picking up food as they walk, whereas herons stand still and strike their prey abruptly. Cranes nest on the ground and gather in flocks to migrate, whereas herons nest in trees and fly alone. Crane calls are pleasant and musical, whereas heron calls are not musical whatsoever. Cranes engage in elaborate courtship dances in the spring that involve jumping, wing flapping, bowing, and head tossing with loud bugling calls. Sandhill cranes form strong bonds and family ties. Pairs mate for life and stay together for more than 20 years. Cranes are long-lived birds. Sandhill cranes lay one to three eggs in nests in wetlands on mounds of vegetation. Birds incubate their eggs for about 30 days. When the eggs hatch, the young birds are well-developed and covered with down feathers. Young cranes, called colts, leave the nest within eight hours and follow their parents as they forage for insects and other invertebrates. Adult sandhill cranes are about four feet tall with a seven foot wingspan and weigh nearly 11 pounds. Cranes are impressive birds. They are slate gray in color with red featherless skin on their foreheads and white cheek patches. The rusty tones seen on a crane's plumage are the result of adult birds preening their feathers with soils containing iron deposits. Cranes are widespread across North America today, but in Michigan, by 1944, records documented only 27 pairs. Cranes were declining because of human disturbance of wetlands and over-harvesting. Hunting stopped in Michigan in the late 1940s and since then, crane populations have rebounded. Today, sandhill cranes are common. Their ruckus calls are one of the harbingers of spring. In the fall, cranes gather in mass to migrate south. You can learn about the crane's journey by reading the story of Luck by Jean Craighead George. All wading birds and cranes need clean water to thrive and survive. This is why it's important for all of us to protect and ensure the water where we live is pollution free. Chemical pollutants from roads and cars can easily wash into our rivers and lakes after rains. We all depend on clean, clear water. The Oakland County Young Birders Club introduced you to three common wetland birds found in Oakland County today, but there are many more birds to see. If you don't know where to go to find birds, start by searching eBird. It is an online database where bird watchers post their checklists. You may be surprised to learn that over 76,000 checklists have been reported and 286 bird species can be found in Oakland County. Oakland County is blessed with many biologically rich natural areas to go birding. The Oakland County Young Birders Club also offers field trips to natural areas. These outdoor experiences are guided and participants can learn about local birds. Field trips and programs are open to all young birders and their families and really anyone. You can visit the oaklandaudubon.org website to learn more.
Oakland Audubon is a chapter of the National Audubon Society and Michigan Audubon. Audubon groups encourage people to learn about birds and local wildlife. Birds are not only beautiful and interesting, but they are critical environmental indicators that gauge the health of the planet. Everyone can do something to help birds. The Cornell Lab of Ornithology offers seven simple actions to take. One action would be to plant native plants in your yards. Birds benefit from this food source. For a complete list, visit cornell.edu to get the checklist. The National Audubon Society has a website, Audubon Adventures for Kids, and this is a great resource for learners. You can download Audubon Adventures for Kids booklet about wading birds to learn more or visit the National Audubon site. Thank you for listening today and get outdoors and see what's there.